The Doctor is neither a hero nor a villain. At times, he might play the role of the antagonist, acting in opposition of the stranger. But I don't think we can say that the Doctor is a villain. I see him more as a victim to circumstance and the circumstances that befell the forest. The Doctor is someone that was confronted with an unstoppable force as the white infestation from the bean spread across the forest, taking over everything living. But he failed the people that he served, being unable to do anything as the plague spread among the villagers. And now, the doctor just wants to be reunited with his daughter, the only thing keeping him going at this point, as he's trying to desperately find a way out of the forest and out of this living nightmare that he's been stuck in for years. For years, the doctor has been stuck in this arboreal hell as the forest slowly became more and more corrupt. For years, he's had to deal with the howling nightmares outside of his home that come out with the darkness every night. And the stranger had a key, the key to the armored door leading to the tunnel that's the last remaining exit out of this alien forest and salvation. And the doctor would do anything that he needed to get the key and get back to her. He just had to find her first. Hi, hello, and welcome. Thank you very much for checking out my video. In today's video about Darkwood, we'll be talking about the story of the character, the Doctor, and how his story may play out. We first meet the Doctor as the controllable character of the game's prologue. We find him sleeping at his desk as he slowly wakes up and stands up and takes account of a cluttered, messy, and disorganized room, reflecting the state that the Doctor was in. Entering the main room of the house, we find evidence of extensive medical experimentation that the doctor has been carrying out. Cages, medical notes, and instruments lay in a mess around the room. In another bedroom, we find strange markings on the floor, along with an old-fashioned radio. Stepping outside, we see that the chaos is not limited to just the doctor's house, but it's everywhere. The doctor passes up a car that hasn't been usable in years, ever since the forest cut them off from the rest of the world. Now it's just a piece of junk that the forest has reclaimed. A destroyed well, a rotting wooden mannequin with the face carved out, his poor dog at laser dying, having a very hard time breathing the heavy air filled with spores from the forest. Even with his scientific training, he was unable to figure out why the forest air has become so filled with spores and so poisonous. The doctor decides that the kind thing would be to end his poor dog's suffering using an axe that he had nearby. On this day, the doctor would encounter a stranger bleeding and unconscious near one of the paths close to the doctor's house. Searching this man, the doctor would find a big metal key labeled 21. It was the key to get out of the forest and find the road home. The doctor didn't recognize the stranger he wasn't from around here, so the doctor would pick the man up and take him back to his house where he would restrain him and tie him to a chair. After a while, the stranger wakes up. The doctor exclaims, I need to get out of this accursed forest. You hear me, rat? Show me how and I will let you go. With a very distant look, staring at the wall, the doctor says that he can sometimes hear her She's calling him, calling him to return home. The doctor even resorts to beating the tied up stranger, trying to get some answers out of him about what is going on, what had happened to the forest, and how could the doctor get out of here? The doctor then threatens the stranger saying, I'll kill you like a dog if I have to, before storming off, leaving the room, and locking the door. And that's the last that we'll see of the doctor for a while. We'll next hear about the doctor from either the musician or the wolf in the second part of the game, The Silent Forest, either helping the wolfman get the key to the pretty lady or giving the same key to the musician, will lead to either one of the two characters, the wolfman or the musician, helping the stranger find the location of the doctor who has taken residence in a local train wreck. Depending on which of the two you decide to help, you will either learn about the doctor's future or his past. In one version of events, 
The stranger is able to get the upper hand on the doctor and manage to surprise and catch him in the train wreck. If the doctor is caught, he'll be found lying against the train car's wall. His face is covered in sweat and an intense odor of alcohol hangs in the air. He says, do not come close you rotten dog. I won't give you the key. Can't you understand I saved your life? You'd rot away in that clearing if it wasn't for me. You owe me. The doctor moves closer to the wall, grotesquely kicking his legs against the floor. You think I don't know who you are, rat? I've managed to get a good look at you. Your kind visits us whenever you please. You hide behind the trees, watch us from a distance, and then disappear. You have no idea how it is to live here. This place, these woods, everything is fucked up here. I won't take any more. Do you understand? I won't bear the look of those deformed, reeking bodies anymore, nor the cries of those wretched villagers. First, they begged for help. Now I need to hide from them. How was I supposed to help them? The doctor goes silent. His face, now hugging the wall of the train, looks truly pathetic. Can you hear it? It's the walls. They speak to me. My little girl is calling me. I know she's waiting for me. I must come back to her. She's so close. His voice breaks down. I want to go back home. I can see panic in his eyes. Please, this key is my only chance. Help me escape this place. Help me or kill me. If the doctor is killed, his story ends here. If he's spared, we'll get to see how the rest of his story plays out in the swamp. A second way that the events of the train can play out is if the stranger helped the musician. If he did, as he walks into the train, he will realize that instead of surprising the doctor, the doctor is springing in ambush on him as the train car fills up with noxious gas. The stranger will wake up with the doctor hovering over him. So you wanted a doctor's appointment, eh? The boy accidentally sets you up. The doctor doesn't try to hide his amusement. He mentioned you'd like to make an appointment. As you can see, I found you just in time. Unfortunately, you won't be able to thank him for it. I can feel the cold doctor's hand grab me by the jaw, twisting my inert head so he can look me straight in the eyes. Luckily for me, something went wrong. Your companions have left you, and you couldn't handle the woods. I'm not wrong, am I? You had your taste of local life. Did you enjoy it? Do you want more? He takes a full syringe out of his pocket. I'll show you more. The stranger has visions of the doctor's past reliving memories of the doctor attending to the patients in the village but being unable to do anything for them and then seeing the villagers turn on him as if it were his fault that this disease was spreading but the doctor was helpless before the disease spreading throughout the forest contaminating it at most he could offer something to numb the pain in some cases he would have to restrain the patients in bed tying up their wrists and ankles as things got worse, the villagers directed their ire and frustration at the doctor, blaming him for the ill that has befallen everything in the forest. But in spite of the villagers begging for his help, he couldn't do anything. As things got worse, the doctor realized that there was nothing that he could do other than offer some false hope that things might get better. As he heard the wails of lamentation and pain from his patients, the doctor's thoughts shifted from helping to escape. And it was around that time that fortunately, the stranger showed up with his special key. The stranger will wake up and discover that the doctor has taken the key and gone up ahead, unlocking the armored door to the swamps and ultimately the road home. If the doctor makes it to the swamp, we'll be able to see how the ending of his story plays out as we'll encounter him a few times while the stranger's in the swamp the next time we encounter the doctor, we'll see the first of the changes that he's going to be going through in this last phase of the stranger's time in the forest. We'll find the doctor caked in mud and sticks. He says, this land hides more secrets than your little rat brain is capable of understanding. The doctor digs through the mud. I think he's looking for something. Deep underground, there's a current of electricity. He starts flaying his arms wildly, throwing pieces of mud everywhere around him, and it flows underground from tree to tree. The doctor suddenly freezes, staring at me with his arms mid-air. And it powers everything. It connects it all. If I had a light bulb, if I just screwed it into one of these branches, it would light up. I bet it would. 
He bends over a small hole in the mud and continues digging. Maybe this is where you're hiding. Maybe this is the way. I haven't slept a wink in many days. I don't think this is good for me. I hear this voice all the time. Can you hear it? Her heavenly voice? The doctor stares right into my eyes. Mud drips from his face. He hasn't blinked in over a minute. No, you don't. Why would you? You don't know her. He steps towards me and lowers his voice. I'm a bit fed up with her. A bit, a little, a tiny bit. She must know I'm heading her way. I'm doing everything I can. I don't eat. I don't sleep. I search under every rock, under every bush. She must understand it. She must give me some time, some little time off. Tell her this, will you? The doctor is lost in his thoughts. A cigarette sticks out of his mud-covered mouth. Using what remains of his shoe, he draws lines on the ground. They seem to intersect in completely random places. He doesn't stop drawing. He moves away a bit and makes a wide arc with his heel. The doctor flicks his cigarette into the dirt, stomps on it and drags it along the ground, creating the last straight line. He says, I'm waiting for you. The last time we'll encounter the doctor, he's in far worse state, curled up in a ball on the ground. The doctor turns his mud-covered head towards the sun and freezes. Then he spreads his arms along his sides, warm. A chunk of mud falls down his exposed tongue. He chews it slowly and swallows with satisfaction. We see that the doctor has added a lot more mud and branches to the mass that he's been making for himself. Now, he resembles the savages that we've been encountering this entire time. The doctor puts the muddy hand in his mouth, grimaces, and pulls out a yellow tooth. He puts it in the pocket of his torn trousers. The tooth falls through a hole. He does not notice this. The doctor begins staring at a nearby tree trunk, paying no attention to the blood flowing between his lips. The doctor glances at me. He tilts his head to the side, lost in thought. After a moment, he extends his hands towards me, as if wanting to grab me by the throat, but stops halfway. He freezes. Suddenly, he bends down and grabs a thick branch from the ground. He starts biting the bark off of it. He swallows the bark with an effort, but also great satisfaction. He places the stick among other ones sticking out of his mud-covered head. The doctor approaches me. I can feel him embracing me. I hear his hoarse breath and smell his odor. I hear him whisper, soon, very soon, not long from now. And that is the last that we will know about the doctor's fate, at least individually. Though we can assume that he meets a similar fate as everybody else in the forest after the epilogue plays out. And with that, we conclude today's video on the doctor's story in indie horror masterpiece, Darkwood. I'd like to thank you very much for spending this time with me. I appreciate and thank you for watching my video. I will be making more videos on Darkwood, culminating in, in a eventual complete playthrough with lore. So if you think that's something that you'd be interested in, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications. Any likes and comments are a big help for the channel, and those are always appreciated. And of course, a big thank you to the members of my channel. I really appreciate your trust and your support. But for now, thank you very much, and I'll see you later. Bye.